Welcome back. Let's talk today about smartphone use and especially if you're having a difficult time consistently improving your eyesight, how your smartphone use may be playing into what's sabotaging you and your gains. The thing that tends to happen is you use your smartphone almost without consciously thinking about it or really without consciously thinking about it as much as hundreds of times a day. Right? Like you get a message, you pull it out of your pocket, you check your message, you check a couple other things, you swipe around, you put it back. And you do this, you pull it out of your pocket, put it back in your pocket, pull it out of your pocket, put it back in your pocket. And you're engaging this really close up distance where you're really spaced out, you're really in this tunnel vision mode of looking at your phone. And the problem that a lot of us already have is we spend a lot of time looking at screens, right? So our ciliary, our focusing muscle already is tight, already has, already tends to spasm, right? So whenever you're getting a break from this and you're relaxing your ciliary muscle, you really want that relaxation to be consistent. You don't want it to be interrupted every few minutes by this distance. Because every time you engage that distance, that muscle goes back into that position where it wants to lock up and it wants to stay there. And, and when you're reinforcing the distance and reinforcing the distance and reinforcing the distance, even during your breaks, even when you think you're going for a walk, even when you think you're talking to your friends, even when you think you're taking a ride somewhere, that yeah, over and over again keep, puts that muscle back in the spot where you really are trying to get it away from. So. Personally, what I've done is I don't, I generally don't have my phone. I don't have it here with you, even to wave it around. I don't put it in my pocket unless I have a specific project going on where I need to be in touch with people or I generally need to be available. I keep it in a bag or I keep it in my car. Or I keep it in my motorbike. I keep it somewhere where of course I can get it if I need it. Like if you're in a space where you can't be totally phoneless, it's around, but it's not in this pocket space where you're just gonna reach for it where you don't have anything mitigating is it really worth reaching for my phone i sometimes use a smartwatch when i'm I, when i'm in a space where i'm working on stuff where people need to be able to reach me because then i get a notification you can tune your notifications to only get the ones on your watch that you really need i can check it i can decide do i need to respond to this now or i can add it to a later pile and that's another big thing I think for myself that I did and that I often recommend is defer all these things to a space and time where it makes sense, right? Like I'm letting emails pile up, I'm letting messages pile up, I'm letting staring at social media pile up till I get to a laptop. And I've actually gone so far as I have multiple laptops, right? And I've, I even have an iPad thing that I kind of caution you to use those. A thing that I put on a desk and open and then specifically spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes, a half an hour going through whatever backlog of messaging and stuff that's going on that I'm not doing on my phone. Because now I can maintain a distance, right? Like I have this on my desk, it's at keyboard distance. I'm not putting it here, right? Like instead of being at whatever, 30 centimeters away, right? Like it's at 50, 60, whatever distance it is, that's much less of this hard lockup that you're gonna get with the phone distance. And I'm also training myself and my brain to not be in this <gasps> reactive spot all the time that goes on hundreds and hundreds of times a day that is not good for you, right? Like it's not good for your mental space, it's not good for your attention span. Like people act all ADD without their phones. They're, they're like addicts. Like sometimes I go out to dinner with friends and if, like I always say, okay, we're not using phones and then especially some people, especially younger people, like people in their 20s are like, get all fidgety. Like they, they're having a hard time dealing with being present in a space with people not involving any screens. And I think removing that instant gratification, right? Like I talk about this in other videos, delayed gratification is something that we're, that we're removing from our lives that is really important for our ongoing success in life, right? Like putting yourself in a spot where you're not getting what you want all the time is something you want. Other people talk about this much better than I do. Not having this, right, is super important for that. Like going, okay, 
I don't care about my messages, right? Like right now my beginning messages, I'm gonna check them when I sit down in front of a computer, which means it is somewhere where I'm gonna have to go to and I have to consciously sit down and I'm consciously gonna have to open the thing and then I'm going through messages. And I do it a few times a day instead of hundreds of times a day. My life is the same. And for those watching this who are like, oh, I don't know if I can do that, like I trade stock, which is something that re requires a lot of attention and a lot of people in that space that I work with say they always have their phone on, they always check their phone. It's not necessary. I make as much money as any of them do, right? I, I, I invest in a number of companies and people in that space are like, well, I need to be connected. I need to be talking to people. You don't. You honestly don't. Like if people know that you're available generally in the morning for an hour and in the afternoon for an hour, they will direct the communication and their expectations in a way to where they know I'm going to reach this guy. He's going to probably respond to me around this time during the day and around this time during the day. And that's it. And this requires some retraining because it's like we're being given free candy basically with smartphone stuff and with instant gratification and the beeps and boops and the message comes up and oh, and your friends checking in and you always feel connected and excited and but not good for you, right? Aside from that though, the cilier will lock up. So if you think you're doing everything right, right? Like you're like, I'm taking breaks, Jake, and I'm, I'm, I'm more aware of my distance and I'm sitting next to windows when I'm working and all this stuff, but I'm still, my improvements are lacking so much of the time when I ask the question, how many times a day to use your smartphone or share with me a screenshot of your daily screen usage. It is something atrocious. Right, and that they're not even counting because then when I ask the question, okay, how much do you use your phone? And people are like, yeah, a couple times a day, maybe 20 minutes. And then they're, they're, the screenshot of their screen use is like four hours, right? Not uncommon at all. And that several times when we've been doing troubleshooting, missing progress, it's boiled down to huh, this phone use, right? And, and people go, I swear, I, there's no way I used it for four hours. It must be wrong. It's because you used it. 80 times, right? A hundred times for a couple minutes at a time. Like that's the thing. And that's even worse because you're sticking your cilia back in that locked up spot, more locked up than at screen distance, which is that much worse for the ciliary spasm. And even if you did everything right, just pulling your phone out a hundred times a day and checking it may negate all your progress because the best you're doing is reducing the ciliary spasm which would be a lot less already if you didn't stick it in that phone mode, right? So my recommendation is to take a step back in time. Imagine it was 10 years ago and you didn't have that thing in your pocket all the time, right? Like I have a crappy one of those 12 inch MacBook things that weighs one kilo, whatever that is, two pounds. You don't even feel it in a bag. And I have that in a bag with me, right? Instead of using the phone. So, if I have to check out my messages and if I'm out all day, then at some point during the day, I'll go to a coffee shop and I'll open the thing up and I'll deal with messages rather than pulling the phone out of my pocket. And you get too tempted, right? And all it takes, people who have been addicted to stuff know how this works. All it takes is one moment of weakness or many little tiny moments of weakness and your subconscious tricking you going, oh, this doesn't count. Oh, don't even think about it. Just pull it out of your pocket. Those are the things you want to avoid, right? Like the smartphone is your pocket is like candy in your pocket. It's candy all the time, but nobody's telling you this because everybody involved makes tons of money. Everybody loves it from Google to Facebook to Apple. So nobody will tell you, Hey, this, this product is not good for you consumed in unlimited quantities, or maybe I'm old. Right. That's another possibility behind me. This is an off grid jungle in the middle of nowhere. Maybe I am just out of touch with reality, but if you're not making the gains that you wish you're making, if you're stuck with improvements and you have this smartphone habit, consider ditching it for a month. Right. And if the first week of it really sucks, that means you've probably been super addicted to it, right? Like addiction that we're not realizing a lot of people aren't really reading into addiction and stories about addiction because you've been fine all your life. You've never done any drugs, but the phone, right? If I'm telling you we're going to dinner, we're going to be hanging out for two hours and you can't check your phone. If after like 30 minutes at dinner, you're like, I really want to check my phone. It's addiction, right? Like if you can't put your phone away 
you're not that important, right? Like again, like I'm not that important either, but I'm invested in a bunch of businesses and I trade stock. I'm doing some of the most screen intensive, attention intensive things you can think of. And I'm friends with some people who are far more successful than I am who don't play on their phones, right? That are literally like, nope, not doing it. So there's no, a lot of the things are excuses and a lot of the things are addiction type behaviors. So try to put the phone away. Right? And, and, and really question your excuses why you don't want to put the phone away. And then let's see how it goes. That's it for this one. If you'd like to give it a thumbs up, there is a related blog post link below. See you in the next one.